Goblin launch detected. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Self-isolation got you down? Well, we've got another EDH game to hopefully cheer you up. In today's game, I'm playing Martin's new version of Athreos, keeping Erebos Blackhearted, Swamp, Plains, Profane Procession, Baron Moor, Lightning Greaves, and Cabal Coffers. We have another Nick joining us, who I'll refer to as New Nick, playing his Tassiker deck, keeping a Hinterland Harbor, Spellseeker, Noxious Revival, Forest, Exploration, Tropical Island, and Garuk, Apex Predator. Martin is rocking his Pelucranos deck again, keeping a Corpse Jack Menace, Swamp, Nick's Bloom Ancient, Dakmore Salvage, Hydra's Growth, Forest, and Lotus Field. Max is playing his stealthy Sliver Queen God Tribal deck, keeping a Prairie Stream, Canopy Vista, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, The Scorpion God, Overbeing of Myth, and Altar of the Pantheon. Max wins the die roll and starts us off. Max plays a Tap Prairie Stream. I play a Tap Baron Moor. Nick plays a Forest and taps it for Exploration. He then plays a Polluted Delta, passing. Martin plays a Tap Dakmore Salvage and passes. Max plays a tap canopy vista. I play a plains and pass. At the end of turn, Nick takes one as he sacrifices the delta to go and find a tapped watery grave. New Nick draws and plays an island and then a hinterland harbor. Three mana then gets him a spell seeker and he goes to find a vampiric tutor, putting it to hand and passing. Martin plays a forest. Max plays an Exotic Orchard, tapping out for his Altar of the Pantheon. I play a Tap Myriad Landscape, and at the end of my turn, Nick casts Vampiric Tutor, losing 2 life to go and find a card to put it on top. Nick draws that card, and plays a Tropical Island, and then casts Life from the Loam. He returns the Delta to his hand, and replays it. Moving to combat, he hits Martin for 1 with a Spellseeker. Martin draws and floats two, and he then sacrifices his two lands as the Lotus Field comes in tapped. He then uses the floating mana for a Secure Tribe Elder, and passes. Max plays a Command Tower, and surprisingly has the appropriate color cost to cast an Overbeing of Myth. I play a Swamp, and cast Smothering Tithe. I pass, and Nick responds, losing a life to his Delta to go and find an Underground Sea, and then moves to his turn. Nick draws instead of dredging, and doesn't pay the tithe trigger giving me a treasure. He plays a bayou, and Martin sacrifices the elder, saying that if Nick attacks, he'd block with it and sacrifice it anyway, but he just wants to save some time. Nick then plays out Garuk, Apex Predator, and he down takes the walker, blowing up the overbeam and gaining 5 life because of its toughness. Nick then goes to combat, hitting me with a spellseeker for 1. Martin draws and doesn't pay the 2. He casts a Sky Shroud Claim, and goes to find a Dryad Arbor and a Forest. He then plays from hand a tapped Overgrown Tomb. Max draws, and doesn't pay the Tithe Trigger. He casts Mogus in his main phase, and passes to me. I can't sacrifice a creature, so I take two from the Mogi Trigger, and draw for turn. I play Cabal Coffers, before casting Erebos Blackhearted. I then use my treasures to activate the landscape, and find two Swamps. Nick takes two from his Mogus trigger on his upkeep, but does deny me the treasure token. He then upticks Garuk, making a beast token, and plays out another planeswalker, Ashiok the Dream Renderer. He doesn't activate them though, and just passes. Martin takes the two from Mogus, and doesn't pay for my treasure. He plays a swamp, and casts a Corpse Jack Menace, and then his commander, Palacranos. This has his commander come in with 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters instead of the 6, and he passes turn. Max draws, and doesn't pay the 2, instead playing a tap steam vents in his main phase. 
He taps his mana, gaining one life from the altar, to help cast the Scorpion God, and he passes turn. I lose two to Mogus, and play a Plains. I pay three mana for Profane Procession, and pass to Nick. Nick dredges three to return life from the loam as a replacement to drawing, and then casts it in his main phase. He returns the Delta to his hand, and then down takes Ashiok, targeting Martin. He has Martin mill his top four, and then all of Nick's opponents exile their graveyards. Nick then makes another beast with Garuk, and replays a Delta. He loses one as he sacrifices it to find a land. Max then reminds him about the Mogus trigger, and Nick sacrifices the Spellseeker before settling on a breeding pool. Nick then taps some mana, and delves away some cards from his yard to cast Tassiger. He passes, and at the end of turn, I activate the coffers with my treasures, making three black mana, and tap the planes to use Profane Procession, exiling Nick's commander. Martin loses two to Mogus, and draws. He plays a Death Reap Ritual, and I find the treasure token that I'm supposed to get from Martin drawing. Max draws, and I get another treasure, and he plays God Eternal Eketra. He then passes to me. I take two from Mogus, and cast Athreos in my main phase. I move to my end step, and put the coin counter trigger from Athreos onto the Scorpion God. At the end of turn, Nick casts Noxious Revival, targeting the Spellseeker to put it on top of his library. Martin responds to this with a Wingrace's Judgment, pulling up Garuk, the Procession, and the Scorpion God, which, as it dies, comes to my side of the board because of the coin counter and Athreos. Nick loses two to Mogus on his upkeep, and draws, and I get a treasure. He recasts the Spellseeker, and goes to find an instant or a sorcery from his library that costs two or less. He reveals a Demonic Tutor, and immediately casts it, having tutored for a tutor. He then passes turn. Martin also takes two to Mogus, and draws, giving me a treasure. We then see a Nyx Bloom Ancient hit the field. Martin then casts Hydra's Growth on Palacranos, giving it two plus one plus one counters instead of one because of the Corp Jack Menace. He still has some floating mana still because of his lands tapping for three, and he has his commander fight the Spellseeker. Martin then passes, drawing at the end of turn because of the ritual. Max draws, and I gain some treasure tokens to catch up. Max then plays Last Man Standing, and we number up the creatures, with Max rolling a d8 to see what survives. The Nyx Bloom survives to Martin's happiness. The Scorpion God then goes to Max's yard, and he gets to return it to his hand at the end of turn. Max then casts Heliod, gaining another life from the altar, and he passes, with Martin drawing at the end of turn from the ritual. I lose the two, and draw. I then pay to activate the coffers, making three, and use a treasure for a Nightmare Shepherd. I then drop a Viscera Seer, and this has Erebos becoming active. I then move to combat, and take out Ashiok, as Max remembers to return the Scorpion God to hand. I then go to my end step, carefully putting the coin counter on the Nyxboon Ancient I plan on inevitably stealing. Nick takes two from Mogus, and dredges his life from the loam, and then recasts it, returning his copy of Overgrown Tomb, the Polluted Delta, and the Bloodstained Mire to hand. He then plays the Delta, and takes one to go and find an untapped island. We then see a season's past, with Nick returning the Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, Polluted Delta, Spellseeker, and Garuk. He then passes turn. Martin takes the two, and draws. He plays a Phyrexian Tower for turn, and casts Lanawar Elves with two green floating. He sacrifices it to the tower, making a lot of black mana, and uses some of it for Primal Vigor. I realize at this point he didn't pay and gain a treasure token. Martin then goes to combat, and is concerned by how much tutoring new Nick will do, hitting him with the Ancient. At the end of turn, Martin draws a card with the Ritual, and I use this as a chance to exile the Ancient with a Path to Exile, which will still return the Ancient to my side of the field with Athreos' coin and trigger. Max draws, and plays a Forbidden Orchard to go with his Exotic Orchard. He recasts the Scorpion God, and then makes three mana, gaining one life from the altar, and giving Martin two spirits from the Forbidden Orchard, as I remember my treasure token. Max uses the mana to activate the Scorpion God's ability, and moves to give the Viscera Seer a minus one minus one counter. With the target on the stack, 
I sacrifice it to itself, and then lose two life to Erebos to draw a card. I also get a trigger from the Twilight Shepherd, and it allows me to exile the Viscera Seer, making a 1-1 token copy of the Seer. Technically, this should be two tokens because of the Primal Vigor, but we do miss it. Max then passes, with Martin gaining another draw trigger from his ritual at the end of turn. I lose two to Mogus, and draw for turn. I tap a Plains for three mana, and then use it to cast Burnished Heart, tapping a Swamp to get three more, and activate it. I lose two life as it dies to the Erebos trigger, drawing a card, and then exile it to the Shepherd, making a token copy of it. Full disclosure, I miss a lot of Primal Vigor triggers this game, but we do catch some later on. I grab two Swamps with the first trigger, and then sacrifice the second token copy to go and find two more. One Plains is then all that's needed to cast Recruiter of the Guard, and I go to find a creature with toughness of two or less. I reveal and put to hand a copy of Timna. I then go hard at New Nick during my combat step, smashing into him with 18 points of damage, four of which is Commander. In my post-combat main phase, I then lose one life to Timna's ability and draw a card. I then make six more mana from Basics, casting Panharmonicon and Talisman of Hierarchy. I then move to my end step, putting the coin counter from Athreos onto the Ancient again. I then sacrifice the Recruiter, losing two life to draw with Erebos, and then exile it to the Shepherd. I scry with the Viscera Seer, which makes no sense because as soon as a token copy comes in, I get two Treater Triggers anyway because of the Panharmonicon. I then go to my library, and I find two creatures revealing Cryptcast and Undead Gladiator before passing turn. At the end of my turn, Nick casts Vampiric Tutor, losing two life to go find a card, while Martin also draws on the Ritual. Nick loses two to Mogus and draws for turn, and I gain a treasure token. He then pays three mana for Spellseeker, going to tutor again. He reveals an Assassin's Trophy, and then casts it on the Nyx Bloom Ancient, who gets destroyed but comes back with Athreos' coin trigger. I then go and find a basic. Once all that's resolved, Nick then follows up with a damnation. It happens, and with the Shepherd seeing the Ancient dying, I exile the Ancient and Timna to make a token copy of each, which technically should be two of each, but we do catch the Ancient later on. Nick then casts Demonic Tutor, and plays his two fetch lands as his land drops for turn, before passing, with Martin drawn at the end of turn from the Death Reap Ritual. Martin loses his two to Mogus, and draws for turn, and plays a Forest. He casts Wood Elves, and goes to find a Forest card. He grabs a basic, putting it to field. He then sacrifices the Wood Elves to the tower, making two black mana, and uses the mana to help Placronos escape exiling some cards from his yard as well. This has the Hydra Commander come in with 24 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and he passes, drawing from the Ritual at the end of his turn. Max draws, and thinks about whether or not to pay for the Tithe Trigger. He decides not to, giving me a treasure, and plays a Plains. He then taps Wooberg to cast the Sliver Queen, and passes. In Max's second main phase, Martin has Palacronos fight the Nyxbloom Ancient token, and with it dying, I lose two life to Erebos to draw a card, while Martin then draws at the end of turn to his Ritual Trigger. I take two to Mogus and draw. I then pay three mana for an Astral Slide, and then a Crypt Cast. Heading to combat, I hit at Nick again, but before moving to blocks, Max taps his Forbidden Orchard to give Nick two new Spirit Tokens because of the Primal Vigor. We then at this point realize that I should have another copy of the Ancient, and Martin lets me use the real copy to represent it. Max also uses the mana to activate the Sliver Queen, making two Sliver Tokens. And Nick blocks Timna, and I gain one life from her lifelink. With Timna dying, I lose another two life, and draw a card to Erebos, hoping for something that isn't a land. My second main phase then has Tesa Karlov join the party, and I then cycle an Undead Gladiator, drawing a card, and using the Astral Slide trigger to blink Nick's other token. I cast Knight of the White Orchid for only one treasure, and am able to at least find one land to get out of my library as it enters. The second trigger does nothing, unfortunately, because at this point I have as many lands as Nick. I then sacrifice the knight to Erebos' ability, taking out one of Max's sliver tokens, and then losing two life and drawing a card, and doing it a second time because of Tesa. I then played a Noxious Gearhulk, extorting it on cast, draining my opponents for one, and gaining three. It comes in, and destroys Palacronos, gaining me 23, and the second trigger from the Panharmonicon hits Sliver Queen, gaining me seven more. Before she dies, Max makes some more Sliver Tokens, which has Primal Vigor trigger to make an extra ones. I then sacrifice the Gear Hulk to Erebos' ability, targeting the Sliver, and then lose two life and draw a card again twice. I cycle Desert of the True, drawing a card, and blinking one of Max's tokens with the Astral Slide trigger. 
I then play the newly drawn older version of Athreos and extort it on Cass as well. I then activate the Cabal Coffers for a whopping 28 black mana, and then sacrifice the Crypt Cast to Erebos' ability. I have both of the old Athreos triggers to return it to my hand, target Nick, who lets me, and I lose 2 life and draw a card twice from the combo that is Erebos and Tesa. I then recast the Crypt Cast. This is then followed up with a Grey Merchant of Ashvidel, who I extort before it comes in. It sees my devotion for black is 7 at this point, draining my opponents for 7 life and gaining me 21, and then doing it again from the Panharmonicon. I then sacrifice the merchant to Erebos to take out another sliver, and ask Max if he'd let me return it to my hand twice, but both times he says no, paying the 3 life. While I lose 2 life and draw a card again twice thanks to Erebos and Tesa. I then cast Soul Ring and put the coin counter on Tesa, and with me passing, Martin draws at the end of my turn as I discard down to 7. Martin loses the two from Mogus and draws and plays a Lotus Veil, sacrificing some untapped land. He recasts his commander again, who this time only comes in with 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters. He then enchants Palacronos with Journey to Eternity and sacrifices his commander to Phyrexian Tower. This returns the Journey as the transformed Atzel Cave of Eternity. Palacronos then comes back from the graveyard as well with 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Martin then casts a Loxod on Warhammer and activates Palacronos to fight Tesa. I lose 2 life and draw a card again, and Tesa then comes back thanks to Athreos' trigger since she had the coin counter. Martin then passes, drawing from the Morbid trigger on his Death Reap ritual. Max draws and gives me a treasure token. He then gains 1 life from the altar of the Pantheon as he casts Austere Command. He picks the modes, destroying all creatures with converted mana cost of 4 or greater, and all artifacts. With Tesa and the Crypt Cast dying, I put the 4 original Athreos triggers on Max, and he takes the 12 to deny them from coming back to my hand. Moving to combat, he hits me for 1 with a sliver token. I lose 2 in my upkeep to Mogus, and cycle a secluded step, blinking Max's sliver token with the Astral Slide trigger. I still have enough devotion to swing both versions of Athreos at Max, dealing 9, 4 which is Commander. I then pass and discard down to 7. Martin takes the 2 from Mogus and doesn't pay the 2 for my Tithe. He plays a Forest and casts Doubling Season. He then activates Atzel, bringing back Palacronos, who comes in with 24 plus 1 plus 1 counters despite it not having escaped. Martin then plays a Nyxweaver and passes. At the end of turn, Max taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Martin some more spirit tokens. Max draws and gives me another treasure. He pays 5 mana, gaining 1 from his altar to cast a Deuce of Calamity. Max then plays a Catcher of the True and has a Forbidden Orchard trigger, giving Martin 4 spirits this time because of Doubling Season and Primal Vigor. Moving to combat, as Mogus is now active, Max swings him at me, and the god also has Vigilance because of Heliod. I take the hit, losing 7 life, and in Max's second main phase, Martin sacrifices a spirit token to the tower, and then Max passes, with Martin drawing to the end of turn from the Death Reap ritual. I take 2 to the Mogus trigger, and draw. I drop a Parallax Wave, which comes in with 10 Fade Counters thanks to the doubling season, and I mow through most of Max's board, exiling them under the enchantment. Max realizes he's mostly done at this point as I swing at him, and in my second main phase, I down tick the wave to exile Palacronos. I then play a land, and cast Wrath of God to wipe the board, and pass turn. Martin draws, and plays a Swamp. He casts Reclamation Sage, blowing up the Parallax Wave, and Martin then recasts his commander, who comes in with 24 counters. I sacrifice the Marsh Flats as he does, losing one to go and find a land, as Martin plays out Garuk Primal Hunter. He comes in with enough loyalty counters because of the doubling season to let Martin use his ultimate immediately, which Martin happily does. This gives Martin 48 tokens of the 6-6 Worms, and I feel like an idiot for using the Wrath of God my last turn. With nothing else, Martin then passes. On my upkeep, I discard a card and pay 2 to return the Undead Gladiator to my hand. I draw and cycle it. The Astral Slide Trigger lets me blink Palacronos, and I then cycle Polluted Mire, exiling a Worm Token. Flicker Wisp then exiles another token, and I pass, realizing all Martin has to do is swing at me to take me out. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below.
Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.